Hey kiddos, it's story time with Aunt Claire and Bo the Bear. Today's story is about a pair of unlikely friends, and it's called Swashby and the Sea. This story is written by Beth Ferry, and it's illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal. Captain Swashby loved the sea. The sea and he had been friends for a long, long time. She knew him in and out, up and down, and better than anyone. So, when Swashby retired, it was to a small house on a small beach as close to the sea as he could be. Whenever he needed something, the sea provided exactly the right thing at exactly the right time. Life was just the way Swashby liked it, salty and sandy and serene. Until... Squeaks and squeals sprang from the empty house next door, which was no longer empty. It had been commandeered by a girl and her granny, who planted umbrellas, scattered beach chairs, and boarded Swashby's deck without permission. Swashby battened down the hatches, hid when the doorbell rang, and fed their oatmeal cookies to the gulls. He didn't need neighbors. He didn't want neighbors. Neighbors were nosy, a nuisance, annoying. So, in return, he left a message written clearly in the sand. No trespassing, which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. Sing, the girl read, and did just that. She sang every song she knew while dancing up and down Swashby's deck. What now? she asked. Now vanish, Swashby wrote later that evening, adding a starfish exclamation point. And the sea fiddled just a little. Wish, the girl read, picking up the starfish, and did just that. She closed her eyes and began, I wish... No, no, Swashby interrupted, stomping down the steps. If ye mean to make a starfish wish, ye must say this. Starfish back to waves so blue, the sea will see a wish come true. How lovely, Granny said. We wish you'd come for a cup of tea, Mr. Swashby. But Swashby wished to be left alone. So he grumbled and mumbled and hurried inside. He didn't need tea. He didn't want tea. Tea was civilized, friendly, neighborly. What he needed was a new message. Please go away, he wrote firmly in the sand. And once again, the sea fiddled just a little. Play, the girl sounded out and did just that, with Swashby's shells and stones with his buckets and shovels. But her towers kept falling. Barnacle bottoms, Swashby muttered, marching out. You're doing it all wrong. You must not use the sun-baked sand. It's the sea sand does the trick. And he showed her how to dig for the wet sand below. Thank 
but Swashby was gone. Before long, amazing sculptures decorated the beach. It's the clam shells you should be using, Swashby called from inside. Come play, Mr. Swashby, the girl called back. Swashbees don't play, he answered, banging the shutters. So, the sea decided to meddle more than just a little. She inched her way up the sand and tickled the girl's toes. She nibbled on the sculptures and slurped away the bucket. The girl tried to grab it, but... Look at me, the girl called. Look at her, Granny gasped. <gasps> oh dear, look at her. Granny hurried to the water's edge, but... Swashby was already there. What are you up to, you great salty imp? He asked, scooping up the girl and the bucket. With a great big wave, the sea delivered the pair back to shore. And there was no stopping the laughing and thanking and hugging that was Swashby's reward. I see what she did, he whispered to the sea as he was whisked away to celebrate. After that, it was easy for Swashby to have tea with the girl and her granny, and ice cream, and lobster, and s'mores on the beach. It was easy for him to share his special sea glass it was even easy for him to see that neighbors could be fun, and friends, and family. And when he had a moment to himself, Swashby carved a heartfelt message for the sea. Thank ye, friend. Which the sea fiddled with just a little bit. The end. That's it for now, but it's not the last story that we are going to read together. Bo and I love each and every one of you, and we can't wait to see you back here next time.